Hello everyone, this is Yoan and welcome back to a new video. Today I've got a cute little project to share. So we're gonna make these lovely chapstick pouches. These are very handy obviously to keep your lip products, be it chapstick, lipstick, lip balm, lip gloss, you name it. This pouch measures about four inches by two inches by one inch deep. It comes with a swivel hook here so you can attach this to your keys or hook it to your purse. Even though I label this as a chapstick pouch, you can also use this to keep your headset, earbuds, phone charger perhaps, or money, and what have you. There are two versions that you can make. So the first one is unlined version. So there is no lining fabric required. This is perfect for thicker fabric that doesn't fray, such as vinyl, four letter, or cork fabric. So this one I made with four letter fabric, and this one I made with cork fabric. Now the second version here is fully lined. This one is great for any woven fabric, such as cotton quilting, canvas, denim, any fabric that you happen to have in your stash. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Let's prepare the material. For the unlined version, all you need is to cut a piece of fabric measuring five and a half inch square. So this one is a cork fabric and this one is the four letter or vinyl fabric. For the lined version, you will need to cut one exterior fabric, of course, and a lining fabric. Now, if you use cotton quilting fabric or lightweight cotton fabric, you will need to fuse an interfacing. So a fusible woven interfacing will be good for this. For the zipper, we're going to use nylon coil zipper here. I use size 5 and size 4.5. They are the same width, which is about one and a quarter inch wide. And you want to use at least 7 inches long zipper. A little longer is even better to give you enough room and flexibility. You'll see what I mean later. Find the center point of both side edges. So simply fold the fabric in half and then mark or snip along the center fold on both sides. Next, we're going to work on a little tab for the swivel hook. For the lined version, you want to cut a little 2 inch square. As usual, you want to fold and press this in a fourth so that you'll have a half an inch wide strip and then stitch along the long edges with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now let's attach the swivel hook. Position the swivel hook tab on one side of the exterior panel, right on the center fold marking, just like so, and then stitch with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now for the unlined version, you simply want to cut a strip of fabric measuring half an inch wide and two inches long, and then install it the same way. Now it's time to attach the zipper. First you want to apply basting tape along the top edges on the right side and then take the zipper. If you use zipper by the yard, make sure to stitch back and forth at the start and the end of the zipper just so you won't accidentally lose the zipper pull. Now it is very important that when you install the zipper to make sure that the start of the zipper is installed on the same side as the swivel hook. So let's lay the zipper right side down matching the edges of the zipper tape with the top edge of the main panel and then stitch with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now for the lined version, you want to work the same. However, after you stick the zipper, you want to add basting tape along the edges of the zipper and then lay the lining fabric right side down, matching all the edges and then stitch also with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, flip to the right side just like so and then finger press along the seams and you want to do the same with the line version and make sure to also press the lining fabric and then top stitch. Stick a basting tape along the edges of the opposite zipper tape. At this point make sure to unzip your zipper at least halfway. Bring the bottom edge of the main panel towards the top and make sure the side edges are also match. Now with the line version, you wanna work the same for the exterior and then flip to the wrong side, apply basting tape along the edges of the zipper tape and then bring the lining towards the top, making sure to match the top and the side edges. And also you wanna make sure to unzip the zipper. If you're not using zipper by the yard, you can just unzip it all the way. This will make everything much easier. Now let's stitch this with quarter of an inch seam allowance. So the unlined version should look just like this. Now let's turn this right side out, press the seams, and then top stitch. All right, now at this point, make sure that your zipper is open all the way. So you wanna lay the fabric flat and make sure that there's nothing getting caught underneath here. 
So this is the reason why we use longer zipper so that there is enough wiggle room when doing the second top stitching. And you should end up with something like this. And this is how the line version should look like. So let's flip this right side out, finger press the seams, both the exterior and the lining fabric, and then top stitch. Now it's time to assemble the pouch. So let's start from the unlined version. First you want to turn this wrong side out. And if your zipper is open all the way, push the zipper pull a little bit towards the inside. However, you want to keep the zipper open at least two thirds of the way. Now match the zipper with the side center point mark. Now at the start of the zipper, you want to make sure that the zipper tape is closed just like that and then pin. And repeat the same to the opposite side, matching the center point mark with the zipper. And make sure that the zipper is also centered. Now for the lined version, you pretty much want to work exactly the same way. And once you've done that, you want to stitch along the side edges with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now when you sew through the start of the zipper, you may want to back stitch to reinforce it. And you should end up with something like this. Now let's trim off the excess zipper. Now if you're working on the line version, the next step will be to finish the raw edges. So you can either do it with a serger if you have one. Simply search the edges. Or you can also use zigzag stitch or overlocking stitch that uh, may come with your machine, whichever one you have. First you want to trim down the seam allowances to quarter of an inch and then run zigzag stitch along the edges. Alright, the last step will be to box the corners. Open the corner and then you want to lay that flat, forming a triangle corner, just like so. Now the seam allowances here should be sitting away from the zipper towards the back. And then you want to go to your sewing machine and then stitch about 3 8 of an inch from the corner point. And you want to do this for all the corners. Now at this point, if you want to, you can trim off the corners, but I don't think that's necessary because they won't get in the way at all and you will hardly notice them anyway. So now you can turn your pouch right side out and then poke the corners, make them nice and flat. And that's it guys, the lipstick pouch is done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe if you haven't already so that you won't miss any future upload. And until next time, goodbye.